Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining our session today. Um, I'm Susanna Pollock, if you haven't seen me enough already. Um, but I'm so, so thrilled to have this opportunity uh, to talk to Allison Matthews, Head of Minecraft Education, and Cherishti Flogstad, the Executive Director of the Nobel Peace Center. Um, hello to you both. Hi. Hi. Hello. It's so good to see you. Um, yeah, so it's so wonderful to have the opportunity to reflect on what is really a unique collaboration between Minecraft Education and the Nobel Peace Center, um, which we'll talk about uh, an amazing project that was released early this year that brings together some of the world's greatest change makers to millions of students around the world. Um, we had the pleasure at Games for Change for being uh, there from the very beginning when we first were introduced to the Nobel Peace Center almost two years ago. Um, but before we dive that into what this remarkable par partnership is about, I'd love to first um, talk a little, let you guys talk a little bit about your respective organizations because Chirsty, this is the first time you've been at Games for Change. Um, and I'd love to, for you to share more about your work to our community. Well, uh, at the Nobel Peace Center, it's all about the wonderful Peace Prize laureates and the power of the Peace Prize. Uh, the Peace Prize uh, has such a great power because of the Peace Prize laureates' ideas and work and how that can inspire the world to do things differently and to encourage us, us all to think that we can be part of a positive change. And uh, so what we are doing is to tell the stories about the laureates and their work in a, a, such a way that we tap into people's uh, beliefs and desires to be change makers. That's what we try to do anyway. And of course, young people are a major target group for us. So every year we have hundreds of school classes coming at the center to do different kind of, kinds of lessons. Um, the problem, though, is that we have limited space and limited capacity, so we uh, have to reject quite a lot of um, uh, school classes every year. And of course, it's not for everyone to travel to Norway or Oslo to do this. So we thought this important, uh, these important stories need should travel further than just sit inside our premises. So we started developing digital lessons. Uh, for teachers to use. And then we were thinking, well, we need also to do something very engaging for the school kids. And we were starting thinking, how can we make gaming a, a kind of a friend of ours to help us doing that? What a good idea. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we did not know anything about gaming. We just thought it was interesting. And we thought it would be a good idea to create a game and put it on our website. That was kind of what we thought until we met you. And then we learned quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was really fortunate um, that we were introduced by a good friend of ours, Evan Siegel from the Siegel Family Foundation, who, mm -hmm. um, as a you know, as a believer in the power of games and our organization, you know, knew the, of your aspirations at the Nobel Peace Center, um, and had the foresight to say, "Hey, maybe the two of you should talk and and see how we can support on on your goals." Um, and that was almost two years ago. And and as you um, said, you know, what the original aspirations were, which were inspiring, you know, from the beginning and where we ended up, um, I think we couldn't have imagined, right, the, the um, possibility of creating a game that would reach as many students around the world as it is now through this uh, amazing partnership with Minecraft Education. Um, so I'm going to turn it to you, um, Allison, now, before we kind of jump into the specifics. I mean, at this point, most of our community is familiar with Minecraft and Minecraft education. But please do share with us um, a little bit about how, I, mean, I guess, what your priorities are right now or any, any um, kind of uh, updates on where you are with Minecraft education and, and why was this partner of interest to you? Yeah, absolutely. So first, it's such a pleasure to be here chatting with both of you. We've worked together over the last several months, and it's so fun to get on a call when we can't see each other um, in the real world. Um, so it's great that your community is familiar with Minecraft, and it makes a lot of sense because I think we're all absolute believers in the power of these immersive experiences in video games to really um, 
introduce players or, or young people to new concepts in such a tangible way. And so we learned this from our community years ago, which is how Minecraft education came to be. And we've been experimenting and iterating on what are the types of experiences that we could create that could even could tackle even more important topics given the state of the world. Um, we know young people are facing all kinds of anxiety producing um, effects in their in their lives, geopolitically, virus related, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we feel like it's really our job to help them interact with those tough topics in a safe space, in in a in a way where they can immerse into the topic, but they're still okay. And ideally inspire them with things that they could go do in their real lives to kind of work through some of these issues that they're facing. So we realized that, you know, we build a video game and we do have educators on our team, of course, who know how to build learning experiences, but we don't necessarily have credibility in all the topics that we wanted to be able to, to cover. So you asked about what's our strategy. Um, partnering with organizations that have credibility in a specific topic area, but they also have curriculum or they have inspiring content that they can contribute to a game in partnership with our game designers to create a really powerful experience. That's, that's absolutely what we're trying to do. And the content that we have put out in that sort of category of social education has been really filling a need, we think, in the educator community, because there's not necessarily curriculum for things like how to strengthen democracy or how to be an active citizen or how to think about the climate crisis. And so we definitely see a need in the marketplace and um, an ability to deliver powerful content through our game. So obviously the, the chance to work with the Nobel Peace Center was something that we were really excited about. But like to your point, we had no idea what this was actually going to turn into and how satisfying for those of us who are building the game it would be and also how powerful of a learning experience it would be for our community so it's been great that's um well thank you for sharing uh kind of how your mindset was when you were thinking about where this opportunity sits within right where, where what your goals were and it was fortuitous timing it was Really, really uh, quite quite amazing. Um, before I, I, we jump into actually talking about the game, I thought maybe we just pause for a second. We've got a 30 second trailer and we can show everyone what it looks like. Um, so here is a 30 second trailer about active citizens. Let's watch. One of the best things about playing Minecraft is that you get to build a world just the way you think it should be. Building a better world is possible in real life too. Find out what it takes to become an active citizen. Follow the stories of four groundbreaking Nobel laureates as you help them craft peace. Without further ado, Minecraft Education Edition and the Nobel Peace Center invite you to play active citizen. Okay. Um, well, that was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that the game has been out there, what, since March? So we've got about three, three months, four months of, uh, of uh, kids playing it around it, uh, kids playing the game all around the world. Um, I'd love to take a few steps back, though, and talk to you again, Chirsty, about what your goals were specifically with this game. Um, and maybe you can talk a little bit about... Um, what your thought processes were through our workshop together and how we landed on um, really this concept of maybe we should bring this to Minecraft, right? Like maybe instead of creating something mm -hmm. ourselves, we'll, we'll go to one of the biggest game developers in the world who has an audience. Yeah, and, uh, and it all started with, uh, I mean, we had this idea that we wanted to reach out to a larger audience. We wanted to go global with the important message of peace and uh, active citizenship. And, uh, and um, as I said, we thought it would be a good idea to develop a game, put it on the website. Then we learned together with you that that, that may be a very tough order because maybe no one, no one would uh, find it. Uh, so th together with Games for Change, we had this strategy workshop uh, and you showed us different options and what we needed to be aware of and whatnot. 
And through that, you you came up with the idea of uh, discussing with Minecraft. And, uh, and uh, well, I must say, I didn't quite believe it would be possible at the time <laughs> when you said it. And then you came back very excited. I remember very, very well. And uh, and since then, it's been a party, really. It's uh, because our strategy is to reach out through partnerships. I mean, that is what we're doing in other uh, aspects as well, because uh, good partnerships help us travel far and, and you know, reach audiences that we would not reach otherwise. And I think perhaps the COVID helped us um, craft that strategy more clearly as well because we saw very clearly that we didn't have any visitors so we needed to find different ways and partnership is very very powerful when you find the right partners that have the same beliefs and uh, the same goals and uh, in this case that has been so true and so rewarding so it was a wonderful voyage together with you in games for change and then you linked us with uh, with Alison and her team, and it's been so fun. Also, it, I mean, seeing you and being together with you now is just is such a joy because it's been a year of uh, such a wonderful experiences of partnerships and working together. Um, so what I found uh, interesting in going through that process with you is that we were able to articulate or help you articulate what you wanted, um, not only to achieve in terms of reach, but what you wanted young people to learn. Right. Yeah. It, it, it was more than just learn about the laureates. Um, it was about inspiring them. Can you talk a little bit about the uh, the kind of storytelling and approach that how you wanted mm -hmm. kids to engage with with the laureates? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, because the laureates are, kind of, as I said, uh, very, very powerful with what they have achieved. And but uh, but initially, most of them were quite regular persons. And uh, to put that in front of children and telling children not to exaggerate anything, but to, we have all the possibility to change things around us. And that to spark that optimism and hope and, um, and um, action in, in everyone is what we really wanted to happen. So, um, so using the, the uh, laureates as role models, uh, actually, and then, you know, um, inspiring young children to to learn from them and see that it's possible to change things and how we, you can do it. That was kind of our goal. Yeah. So, Allison, when when we started a conversation with you at at Minecraft Education, um, there was clear alignment in in um, your interest to bring these conversations and about democracy and and active citizenship um, in safe spaces, which I just, I love that kind of context and, and framing it that way. Um, but, I, uh, but what I also saw was an enthusiasm within your team to get like deeply involved. And from what I understand, there was a, you know, kind of like a swell internally of saying, we really want to work on this um, on the development side as well. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about the, um, about about the process of making the game internally, as well as some of the like unique game, you know, aspects about about the game itself. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, so Mojang Studios is definitely our purpose is to build a better world through the power of play, and nowhere in the studio does that come to life as powerfully or has the opportunity to come to life as powerfully as is through education because that's where we engage one-on-one -on -one and directly with young people who can who can learn from what we the content that we put out and then actually bring it to life in the real world and so when the studio more broadly started to hear that we were working on this project so many people raised their hands to be involved because it's a it's an opportunity to have tangible real world impact in people's lives so we embrace our creator community we minecraft wouldn't be anything what it is today without our broader creator community. And so we'd love to get our creators involved in many of our important projects. And, but in this one in particular, our in-house designers raised their hands and they're like, yeah, we really want to work on this. And so it was a, a really cool collaboration between the Minecraft education team and then some of the studio designers who, who 
use this as a chance to take their craft to the next level. So we, we have, we have started, um, we had done some social education content, for example, lessons in good trouble, um, which was our first sort of major foray into this type of content. Um, and what, what that team had done with active citizen was they took the stories of the laureates and, and boiled it down to sort of the essence of what was the special thing that that individual did in their community to change their community and therefore change the world. Um, and we tried to capture that in, in gameplay. So it was a real challenge. So I can use the Dalai Lama's part of the game for, for one example, because it's the part that had the most lasting impact for me. Um, so when you enter the Dalai Lama's part of the world, you, you meet him on a, on a mountainside and he basically teaches you through little lessons, like feeding berries to animals and the importance of just being still and being patient and being peaceful. And that is how you achieve the goal that you're going for. And I remember working my way through that experience where the, the activities get progressively a little bit harder. And at the end, you go to a village and you have to learn that you have to listen and assume best intent, maybe have trust in, in your neighbors and in your community in order to solve problems and, and get through um, frustrations that the villagers were feeling. It, to me, it was it was so simple, and yet it was so powerful. And I find myself thinking back about that that concept of assuming best intent and how that is the way forward. So even for me, someone who thinks about this stuff a lot, I learned a lesson from playing through this game. And so that was that I, I guess is a testament to how much the team cared about working on this project and um, how much thought that they put into how to bring these lessons to life in a fun way. Yeah, you can, it and, really shows. Go ahead, Kirsty. And, and the beauty is that we together selected four different laureates with four different methods uh, of being uh, active citizens demograph uh, democratically. So it was Malala, she used her voice and um, writing blogs and stuff. So that is one way children can activate themselves. And then Vangari Matai, she was planting trees one by one and eventually it became a movement. And that is also something that we can do. We can do, we can pick litter or we can do small things. And, and uh, that is also something that can grow to a bigger movement or it can be useful just as it is. And, and then it was uh, Fritjof Nansen, a Norwegian in, from last century, 100 years ago, he helped refugees and he was very inventive and invented the refugee passport, the Nansen passport. So he was a social entrepreneur and that is, uh, I mean, you can invent uh, and do things differently. So all these four different ways of uh, engaging yourself is kind of what children learn through this game. And I, I, it's so cleverly done. And, uh, and then in the end of the game, it's this challenge so that the children can build a world or kind of create something that they would like to see. So it's a, a challenge in the end and we can have competitions around that and it's kind of in, very engaging. And I think uh, if I'm not mistaking, I think that children uses in average 20 minutes in the game um, every time, you know, so it's, uh, as I understand it, it's quite a long time. And uh, so it seems that it really is engaging them. Yeah, the way, so to your point, Shristi, the way that we measure the the impact of a piece of content is how many times it's been played and then how long our players stay in, in that lesson. So the length of time they spend in the lesson means that they're, in, they're having fun, they're enjoying it, et cetera. And so for Active Citizen, the number of sessions that we had, I, I don't know if I can give the number, but it was, it was significant. Um, and it was played in countries all over the world. Our reach right now, we're, we're in uh, over 100 countries. And we had, you know, dozens and dozens of countries 
playing through Active Citizen already. And the session time has been the longest that it's been, that of any of our content has been. Mm-hmm. So um, it just, I think it just goes to show, like I mentioned before, there is a hunger for this type of content and it's, it's, it's fairly unique in terms of the types of experiences that you can have in game in schools. So that's great. And then it's uh, also, I think it's, you can learn something. It's, I bet it's also fun. It's, it's a little bit of humor in it. It's uh some challenges it's uh it has so many features so it's really i think yeah that's great i, I love it bit. i just love it i think it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> but i'm not very good at it though no uh, but <laughs> well, none of us will ever be as good as the students playing this game in classrooms so that that's just something that we have to let go of and watch them have a good time. Um, I'd love to talk a little bit about what happens outside of the game too, because since the context that students are experiencing this is is in the classroom, and for the most part, it's educators that are bringing this into uh, a curriculum or or in some kind of uh, area of study. Um, and uh, Tristan, I know it was really important to you that there were mm-hmm. uh, lesson plans and supports for educators. Uh, because we know that a lot of the learning is going to take place outside of the game as well. Yep. Um, you want to talk a little bit about your, your vision for that and what's available for educators? Um, I'd love to. Yeah, because that's uh, for us, that is also very important that it can, that the game can be part of a, a larger education experience and that the teachers have much material so that they can build the game into a project or lessons uh, that give a rich education experience for the children so that they really get the most out of it. So so together with the people from Games for Change, we have been able to create uh, lesson plans. It's actually a quite rich toolkit, I would say, mm-hmm. covering all the four laureates plus Alfred Nobel. And you can then find PowerPoints, presentations, um, um, uh, there will be a kind of... Um, material for groups to discuss uh, uh, other things that uh, can activate the children outside the game as well so that they will have different kind of learning learning experience around it and then backgrounds material small, uh, small videos has been created so it's a quite a rich package act, actually uh, connected to this and um, and uh, so I think one of the challenges that we have, is for teachers to actually understand the richness and how to use it. Uh, and that teachers don't have to understand how to play Minecraft themselves. They can still make a very good education experience without them understanding that themselves, because I don't think that is necessary. The t- kids can <laughs> will find out very easily and the teacher can concentrate on the PowerPoints and all of the other lesson <laughs> material that's in there. So um, at, at least I know from Norway that some teachers are a little bit concerned about that. They don't know and how to, you know, like me, <laughs> but I don't think that is necessary. No, it's not. They can ab- ab- absolutely use this and make a wonderful experience for the kids um, with everything that's in there and have the kids playing the game. And so it's, um, and, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead, finish. No, no, it's okay. Um, so, and this material is found both on the micro, my, uh, the Minecraft education uh, website in terms of the resources, but also on the Nobel Peace Center website too. Yeah, right? yeah, it's on our website. Very easily to find, easy to find on NobelPeaceCenter.org. Great, great. And I'll, I'll just add in like a plus one to that content is like, I think one, a, perhaps the hesitation teachers have in bringing a game like Minecraft that kids love so much into the classroom is that, Well, they're just going to be playing a game. And so how is that valuable? But in talking to educators and they see both the depth of learning that can happen through the in-game experience, but also all of these extra materials that are created in videos and and content proves to them that there is depth of learning that has to happen out of the game as well. And that's where that's where dialogue happens. And that's where real world impact starts. Right. Yeah, it's reassuring even just to know that this material is, has been thought through, right, um, and is available as, as resources. Um, so one thing I've been thinking about as, as I was prepping for this uh, conversation is, you know, how much is 
changed in the world from when we started working on on this mm. project several months mm. ago. And um, you know, I'm curious from your from your perspective, how much world events have shaped your goals and priorities for the partnership and and where we are kind of now. So I'll, I'll speak from our perspective. So we talked about how much our community and our customers have really loved this content and how like the, the usage is great. And so we're really happy about it from like a business perspective. But to your point, what's happening in the world right now and how much division exists and conflict, new conflicts exist. Um, and then additional crises that are sort of either right in our faces or bubbling up in the background. There is nothing more important right now than making sure that we are educating young people on these events that are impacting them in their real lives and giving them real tools and, and skills that, that they can go use out in the world. So um, I, I'm happy to, to talk about the fact that for this partnership, we've agreed to build a second world um, focused on peace laureates, highlighting the, the peace laureates and um, to give students an even like a more, even more well-rounded set of skills and in and inspiration that they can use to start thinking about um, and hopefully dealing with some of these impacts in the world. And we've also been connecting with the broader Nobel Foundation because like, like we've said, this has been a, it's been a very um, satisfying partnership. That's the kind of understating it, but just it's been mm -hmm. just so satisfying to have people to work with to, to, to on such a deep level on these topics. So we are looking to address additional topics focused on other types of laureates, um, for other winners of, of prizes beyond the Peace Prize so that we can dig into topics like science or climate change or even... Um, critical thinking, for example, because we think all of those topics are incredibly relevant now um, more than ever. Mm. And in, in, in the situation in Europe uh, these days is kind of, um, it's so sad. And what, what we were very happy when we agreed with uh, Minecraft to, to create a, a new game uh, more focused on building peace. How can peace be built? How can how is peace possible? So in this new game, um, we, there will be uh, peace laureates with more kind of active, like mine, uh, you know, mine. What do you call it? mine clearance? Um, like Jody Williams. Uh, it's uh, UNHCR helping refugees more actively and all of this. I mean, so and it's. Um, this one too, too, and uh, with forgiveness and uh, and going further. And then it's um, Osoyetsky that is kind of talking about um, the, the importance of freedom of speech, for instance. So so um, these topics hopefully will give children and young people the hope that peace is possible and the skills, as you say, Alison, that peace can be made and that we all can, uh, can participate in that. So based on this wonderful partnership and the trust that we have created among ourselves, I think we, um, we have experienced uh, a level of respect and that we can discuss issues if we find things difficult. And we have always kind of uh, felt that we our point of views are taken care of so that we are very, we are totally safe uh, and feel kind of confident that uh, this will the laureates and the peace prize will be presented in a very accurate and kind of correct way. So, so with that uh, experience, uh, we were kind of very very happy to go further. And uh, the whole Nobel Foundation now also in Sweden are extremely excited about this partnership. So it's uh, um, yeah, what what to say, Alison? It's. Um, well, it's <laughs> So great. And, and like you asked about the studio, the studio's reaction, um, our, our, the leadership of Mojang Studios are just like, so can we do something with the Nobel team every year? They're just- Whoa, <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. really fantastic. Yeah. Well, I think we're coming to the end of our, our, of our session, which makes me very sad because I've really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, there's a lot of inspiration in here. I hope for others as well to understand that 
you know, one can, I mean, we're talking about meeting kids where they are, right? And in this case, it's in a game experience, one that though, one is that, that is structured in a way to be self uh, safe and inclusive and to have trust. Um, and the fact that that kind of experience uh, is able to attract a world-class partner like Nobel Peace Center and that we're, you know, that collectively an experience is being, has been made and will continue to be made to, to reach young people on some really important uh, topics that help will develop them into being active citizens in the world, right? And, and participants in hopefully making this uh, place a more peaceful place to, to live for yeah. all of us. So I want to thank you both for joining. Uh, we will all be looking for the next game coming out, I think, sometime later this summer or early fall that will be available. Is that kind of right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and more to come. So thank you again, both of you, for joining us. Um, and thank you, everyone, for, for listening. Thank you for bringing us thank together you. again. Thank you both. Thank you, Susanna.